Hello, this is an overview of the 2025 Lilly Endowment Community Scholarship Program through Legacy Foundation. My name is Jody Kateva. I'm the Scholarship Administrator with Legacy Foundation. My contact information is on this screen. If at any point during the application process you have questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out to me so I can help work through those with you. Legacy Foundation has two scholarship cycles. The first is the Lilly Endowment application. That's what this presentation will cover. That opened on July 1st of this year, and the deadline is September 15th at 5 p.m. We also have a universal scholarship application cycle for over 40 different scholarships that is available November 1st of this year. So for the Lilly Endowment Community Scholarship, there are some eligibility requirements. You will be asked to do an eligibility quiz when you first log in. So you have to be a graduating senior from an accredited high school in Lake County, Indiana. Unfortunately, the Lilly Endowment does not accept online only or homeschooling. So you have to be attending a school that's accredited in Lake County, Indiana. You have to be a resident of Lake County, Indiana. The scholarship covers a full-time course of study, so you have to have the goal of going to school full-time in the fall. You have to have an unweighted GPA of 3.25, so be sure to ask your guidance counselors um, what that unweighted GPA is if you don't have access to that on your transcripts. So again, you have to both reside in Lake County and attend high school in Lake County. And then finally, there are income requirements, and we will talk more about that in upcoming slides. So what is the Lilly? The Lilly Endowment was established in 1998, and each county in Indiana participates participates in this process through their community foundation. And that's how Legacy Foundation is able to promote this to the students of Lake County. Through this process, we will award six scholarships to Lake County residents. And these scholarships cover four years of tuition to any accredited four-year private or public college in Indiana. And then the student will also receive a $900 stipend for books each year. Please note, this is not a full ride scholarship. Uh, room and board is not covered through this award. Although from my past experience with this scholarship, often these students are awarded other aid through the school so that they pay very little to attend, if any. But again, the room and board isn't covered traditionally just through the Lilly Endowment Scholarship. So we talked about the eligibility criteria already. Um, you do not need to be a citizen in order to require, in order to uh, apply. And then the selection criteria, we're really looking at academics, um, leadership skills for our students, service to others, how they've been in involved in their community, character, essay, and then there is an interview component for the top scoring students. So the process and timeline, September 15th at 5 p.m. you is the deadline to apply. Um, we do not allow you to apply after that date and you are not allowed to make any edits to your application. So make sure you have everything ready to go, um, hopefully well before 5 p.m. On September 18th, each school is gonna receive all the completed applications from their school. So the Lilly Scholarship is a bit different than our other scholarships because your high school is actively involved. We will send each high school, there's 24 in, in, the, in Lake County, each high school is going to receive all of their school's applications and then the school has their own process to select one student to move along and be reviewed by Legacy Foundation's team. And so that 
happens from September 18th until October 4th. So by October 4th, Legacy is going to know which student each school has selected to move on. So there are 24 finalists, one from each high school in Lake County. And as such, we will notify all of the students that have applied by October 4th, whether they have been selected as the school's finalist. On October 9th, we are gonna ask all finalists to turn in financial verification documents. So again, there are financial requirements in order to apply, and you do not have to send those until you are nominated by your school. Once your school selects you to be the finalist, you will have to email me either copies of your most recent uh, tax forms or any other kind of financial documents. And I work through the schools and the parents and the students to make sure that we have what we need. At that time, Legacy Foundation has our own scholarship review committee. We will be looking at all of the 24 finalists and we will select the top ranking 16 to 18 to be interviewed and move on in that line. And then finally, we will be having interviews in person here at Legacy Foundation on October 29th or 30th. These are randomly generated. So um, you would find out on October 21st if you're going to, to be interviewed and what your interview day and time will be. We then tabulate our school scores, determine our recipients, those have to then in turn be reviewed by the Lilly Endowment and they get back to us and confirm our selections. And then we notify students in mid-December. So again, there are six recipients of the award and then we also select four alternates in case one of those initial recipients declines the award. Through this process though, we also award six additional scholarships and they range from $10,000 to $1,000. So how to apply? The application is available on our website. You're gonna go to legacyfdn.org and then select the Lilly Endowment Scholarship under the Scholarships tab. You will have to create a brand new account unless you have one before, but you likely do not. Please, do not use a high school issued email account. If you do, we will delete your application. The reason is because I am not able to email directly to many high school email accounts and we do most of our communication through email. So it's critical that we are able to get in touch with you if we've got questions, comments, etc. And once you select uh, or once you create an account there is a forgot your password button. So if you come back um, and you forget it, you're able to reset it. You're gonna be creating a profile. Keep in mind that this is the profile that's gonna be linked to all of your applications everywhere. Um, so it's really important that you spell things correctly, that you capitalize correctly. Um, I don't wanna to have to go in and make those changes for you in the system. And this is also a reminder that this application really needs to be completed by students. Um, obviously, there are some financial questions that parents can or guardians can assist with, but we do not want other parties completing your application for you. And then in the top right corner, there is an update your profile option. So if something were to change, if you got a new email address or you moved, um, we would ask that you please make any necessary changes so that we can get in touch with you. So this is what the student apply page looks like. Once you enter your information and start your account, you're gonna start the eligibility quiz. It's going to ask you a number of questions to help make sure that you're eligible for the scholarship. And this is where we will talk about the financial requirements. So in order to apply, your student's family have to be considered 150% of the median income. 
So what this looks like is, and this is where you will need either a parent or guardian to probably assist you, you will need to look at your 2023 AGI, so that is from your last year's income taxes, and that AGI will be on line 11 of your 1040 IRS tax forms. Um, in the application, there is an example that shows you exactly where you would be able to find this. And you're also going to look at the number of people in your household. And so again, that's on taxes. So how many dependents and how many income providers, you're gonna add those together to have your number in household. And so your guidelines show that the number of, of people in your family has to either be equal to or less than the AGI listed. So for example, if there are four people in your family, your family cannot have made more than $136,314. Um, it has to be less than the $136,000. 313. And again, if you are nominated by your school to be the representative for your school, you are going to have to verify this information through documentation. So we're going to ask for a copy of your tax returns. If your family did not file tax returns, then I will work with you to figure out what other kind of information you can send, but we do need financial verification. I also know that there are some tricky questions. Um, you know, everybody's household and family looks different. So if you've got questions about whose income you're supposed to use, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, we follow along what the FAFSA uses. And so, uh, you know, one thing that comes up a lot is that, so if your parents are divorced or separated, um, you're gonna use the income for the parent who provided the most financial support to you, even if you don't live with that parent. Um, but again, if you've got any other questions about that, feel free to reach out to us directly. And then again, we've got a financial information flow chart. Um, so this can also help kind of flush out uh, whose information you're going to be using. So once you select, um, you know, you answer all of those questions and then you submit, your eligibility is going to either confirm that you can apply or not apply. Um, if you're not able to apply, um, you will get an error message. If you feel like you've gotten this um, incorrectly, again, please reach out and I'll work through, you know, figuring out why it said that. Um, if you are able to apply, it will just say that your eligibility has been submitted and it will show the continue button and then it will show the apply button. Once you are in the application, this is what it will look like. You can expand and close each of these sections. I understand that it can look very, very long and daunting. Um, I will say I've spoken with students in the past. Um, they say that the entire application should not take more than two to three hours. So if you have the information ready to go about what you've participated in, it really uh, doesn't take as long as it might seem. So in this top right hand corner, there's the question list button. If you wanted to download a PDF of the application, you can do so here. If you're someone that prefers paper and pen, you know, this allows you to look at it that way. Uh, you do have to submit everything online though. Again, you can expand and close each of these sections. So as you're doing one, you know, you can open it and then when you're done, close it to kind of keep it all succinct. And then at this bottom left, so I do a lot of reminders. I will text you, I will email you many times. If you get into the application and you realize that you don't want to apply, then please select this abandoned request. And that way our system will know that you're not completing the application. And it will also let me know not to continually bombard you with reminder emails and texts. 
And then when you're done, you submit your application on the bottom right hand side. You are able, the system auto saves. It does have a save application button, but as you type, it does automatically save for you. And you can, you know, start and finish, come back. You do not have to do the application in one sitting. So student view, once you get into the application, um, there's a number of kind of demographic questions. I will ask that everyone do the high school first. Um, that helps me because I keep an active list of who's applying from each school, and I do provide that information to your guidance counselors. Um, and so if I don't have a high school, then I don't have anywhere to send that information. Again, so there's more family information. So we just want to know, you know, who do you live li with? What does your family structure look like? What are the names of your parent, parents, or guardian? Um, your parent status? How long you've lived in Lake County? Um, if you've got any siblings, their ages? This is all information just to help us get to know you. The financial information. So again, all the school nominees are going to be asked to verify this. So we do need your AGI as reported on your taxes. This should not be zero. Um, at some point, your family will likely have gotten some type of aid, um, whether it be through grants or other federal or state programs. Um, so I can work with you to figure out what that number is if you don't know if your family did not file taxes. We also need to know how many people are in your household, and this should not be e uh, zero either. So minimally, there's one person in your household, and that would be you if you were an independent person. Um, if your family didn't file tax returns, then that's fine. We just want a brief explanation as to why, and that helps me work through what information we will need from you if you are determined to move ahead from your school. And then finally, we've got a financial statement. So the reviewers really use this to just kind of get an overall sense of what the family's finances look like. So sometimes the numbers don't do a family's um, finances justice. So for example, uh, you know, say last year, one of your parents or your guardian lost their job. And so your income is significantly different this year than it was last year. This is where you would put this in. Um, say there are medical bills that your family is struggling with and that's not reflective in the numbers. You can put this here. Um, we also want to hear about how you intend to pay for college. So if you don't get this scholarship, what are your plans? Do you plan on working? Do you plan on doing work study? Um, do you have savings? You know, things like that. We're also going to want to want we're going to want you to talk about extracurricular activities and what you've been involved in. We want you to include activities that you participated for at least two semesters. So if you did one club for one semester, we don't really need it here. Um, so these are things that you've done at school. Um, and then for athletics, it is okay to include sports if you're on, for say, for example, a travel team, a travel ball um, that's not through your school. You can certainly put this here, um, even though it's not related to your school. And then finally, there are a lot of school clubs where you do volunteer work. This is where where you want to list those. So we want your National Honor Society and your key club, we want this listed here, not under the volunteer section. Now, please keep in mind, there is a text box here where you can elaborate on things. This is where I would talk about any volunteer activities that you participated in that were through, say, Student Council, Key Club, NHS, things like that. And make sure that you're putting in a generalized estimate of the number of months per year that you participate in this and about how many hours per week. I know that it fluctuates, but it helps give the reviewers 
um, a good sense of how you're spending your time outside of school. So the next section is the community, religious, and civic activities. So again, this is not where we want you to list activities related to school service clubs. This is only for service hours that are done outside of those clubs. So if, for example, you volunteer at the local YMCA or you volunteer through your church or Boys and Girls Club or Cub Scouts, Girl Scouts, you know, things like this, this is where you're going to put these service type activities. We're also going to want to know if you've had any employment experience. So one of the key points here is that we do allow you to upload a resume. You are not required to upload a resume. Um, we are not trying to make extra work for you. So if you have a resume that's already done, we want to make sure that you include the hours per work per week that you worked on that resume and then you can upload it and then you can be done. Um, if you don't have a resume already done, then you can go through and answer the questions, <clears throat> whatever is easier for you. So student essays. So these are short essays. Um, they are not very wordy. We're looking for about 250 to 400 words in each one. I definitely recommend that you do them in another format and copy them into the box. So do it on Word, do it in a Google Doc, something like that, so that you can make changes, edit, all of that. And then when you're done and happy with them, you can cut and paste them right into the application. So there are two essays that are mandatory that you have to write. Um, so one, explain your future educational and professional goals. Why have you chosen this? And how might these goals contribute to improving the quality of life in Northwest Indiana? The second mandatory is how have you taken advantage of networks or opportunities in your school, work, or community to enhance your journey, your learning journey, and cultivate your leadership potential? And then finally, for essay three, you can pick one of the two following prompts. Um, and just make sure when you pick one <clears throat> that you let us know which one you've chosen. So we want you to either discuss an accomplishment, event, challenge, or realization that sparked a period of personal growth and a new understanding of yourself or others, or just write us a short autobiography. Um, you know, we want to know about your family, your hobbies, your spare time activities, what inspires you. Um, and, you know, this really allows you to elaborate on something that you either didn't get to address in your application or something that you want to talk about more that you've already touched on in the application. So recommendation context. So this is important. So you do not need to get a recommendation letter for this scholarship application. Um, as I had mentioned, your school selects one student to move on to be reviewed through legacy. And so what we've done is ask you if this scholarship team at your school, so they're looking at all the applications that they have, um, and depending on the size of your school, these individuals that are deciding who's moving on may or may not know you. So who are two people that work at the school that your school could contact to get information and speak highly about you? Um, that's all that we need for these recommendation contexts. You don't need to do anything further from them. You don't need to get letters of recommendation from them. Um, they're just simply there so that the school can talk to them when they're looking at your application. And then before you submit, you can download a PDF of your application. Um, it'll say application packet on the top 
right corner. Um, so if you just wanted to read over everything before you submit, that is available for you there. And so just some general tips that I tell all the students. One, brag about yourself. This is really a time to highlight all of the wonderful, awesome things that you've done throughout high school. Um, to follow up with that, you know, take your time and write down all of your activities that you've done, um, especially right now. So this is early. You haven't started applying to colleges yet. You will need this information over and over this next year. So take a minute to open up an Excel sheet, open up a Word doc, whatever you use, and write it all down. You know, ask your friends, ask your family members, um, make sure you didn't forget anything. Um, but, you know, write down all of the things that you've done throughout high school, write down your goals, what sets you apart. Um, it will be great for you to have this information handy. Um, another scholarship tip is that capitalization and spelling counts. Um, you know, so this scholarship pays for full tuition. If you choose to go to Notre Dame or Rose Holman or one of those private schools, this scholarship is worth well over $200,000. Um, so I want to make sure that you care enough to capitalize what should be capitalized and that you've used the spell check that's available to you. Um, as I mentioned, you are able to print the asset, the application, I would do so. Um, I really think that sometimes when you read things out loud, you will catch things and hear or see errors that you don't always see. Um, when you're reading it quickly, sometimes your mind makes adjustments and fixes things for you. But when you print it and you look at it and you're reading it out loud, sometimes you catch things. Um, make sure uploaded documents are correct. Uh, so for this specific application, you don't have to upload anything, but our other scholarship applications you do. So I keep this on there um, just so that whatever you're doing in the world, whatever you're applying to, future colleges, um, all those types of things, you know, make sure before you submit that those documents are correct. Um, I have seen valedictorians get looked over because they inadvertently uploaded the wrong document. So they were supposed to upload an essay and instead they uploaded the financial form. Um, so you don't want a, a mistake like that to cost you. Also, find a reviewer, you know, find someone that might be able to look through your application. They may be able to find things uh, that you miss. And so that could be someone at your school, a friend, a family member, a guardian, you know, anyone that is available that might be able to help you. Uh, finally, take your time, you know. You don't want careless errors to have significant impacts on this. Don't wait until the last minute to complete or submit. Computers have glitches. Um, every year I have a handful of students that say, oh my gosh, I don't know what happened. I went to submit, it was 4.55 and it wouldn't let me. My computer needed to update. Unfortunately, once our deadline hits at 5 p.m., we are not able to accept any more applications. Um, so I would hate for you to spend a lot of time and energy on this and then miss it because you weren't able to submit at the, the right time. Um, say bad weather comes in and your you know, uh, Wi-Fi is out that afternoon. Um, you know, I always tell people, I would pretend that the deadline is the day before and that way it's done and it's finished and there's no worries and no stress about it. Here are some essay tips. Um, I'm not gonna read through these, but these are available online as well. And then questions. So uh, the information, all of this information, this PowerPoint is available on our website. So you can go through page by page. Um, if you have questions about anything that we've covered, please don't hesitate to reach out. I am here to work with you. Um, 
thank you for taking the time and I hope that you apply for this awesome scholarship. Thank you.